Hi, everyone. Dr. B here. Again, thank you for joining me on another episode of Ask the Dentist. I'm your host, and I have been on the road a lot lately. I apologize. Uh, I flew down to Los Angeles to do a podcast with my friend Drew and also met Max Lugavere for the first time, did, a, did an episode with him. And so today um, we're going to talk a little bit about bad breath, uh, mouthwash, high blood pressure, how it all starts in the mouth. Now, that should be of no surprise to you that I'm saying that. And we've been talking about on, on this platform for a long time about a study. Uh, actually, there were several studies, uh, late 2010, uh, and then some more recent studies on tongue scraping. The, the first early studies being on this relationship between mouthwash and high blood pressure. Um, I'm glad that People like Dr. Perlmutter, Max Lugavir, Daru Perot, uh, a, a lot of other influencers and physicians, uh, other dentists are getting on the bandwagon. And that is that if you take away mouthwash, your health will improve. Just that notion alone. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, and just some of the, uh, again, small bites here today on this connection. Just some actionable stuff you can do. First of all, get rid of mouthwash. Just get rid of it altogether. Don't look for an alternative to the mouthwashes that I'm going to discuss that are bad for you, that create blood pressure issues, health issues. Um, just get rid of mouthwash. It's something you don't need to spend time doing. It's uh, money you don't need to spend. Uh, just swishing with water or salt water. If you want to do that, that's fine. Baking soda is something I often recommend. Um, that's fine, uh, but it's nowhere near as good as scraping your tongue, flossing, brushing your teeth, using the right toothpaste. Uh, just get rid of that product, that category of oral health product. Just, just, just remove it from your, your consciousness. You don't need it. Swishing with water, any liquid is not as good as the mechanical, uh, touching the gums, massaging the gums, flossing, breaking that biofilm, dropping in between the teeth. Mouthwash just doesn't get into the nooks and crannies. I'm sorry. Uh, now, if you have braces with metal wires and brackets, whether they're composite plastic brackets, resin brackets, or stainless steel, um, then vigorous swishing with salt water, something pretty innocuous, oil pulling, for example, uh, with braces, there's something to be said about that. And I'm going to finish with that. Uh, probably just talk about oil pulling. Oil pulling has way more benefit than mouthwash. Uh, but okay, so where does this all come from? Studies in a decade, decade and a half ago, connecting the use of a bacterial cidal mouthwash. That's pretty much every single mouthwash. We've got detergents, emulsifiers on the soft end, on the least damaging end. And then we've got alcohol, very strong essential oils, eucalyptus oil being uh, one of the major EOs in mouthwash. Um, probably not going to mention names. I usually do, but I I'm just going to, uh, it's enough just to tell you how bad mouthwash is. Uh, and and essential oils, uh, also triclosan, hey, there's a, a, can't remember now, pyrexidine, cytidine, cytidine, pyrexidine. It's a, it's a, it's almost a, um, uh, a uh, herbicide, sorry, pesticide. It has that kind of mechanism. I mean, they, uh, soaps, um, alcohol is, is typically one. There's also one that dentists recommend uh, and that is um, uh, chlorhexidine. There have been plenty of studies that compare, compare chlorhexidine to a hydroxyapatite. Uh, uh, that's just the mineral in water uh, mouthwash, and, and the results are the same. Uh, this prescription strength, which now I think you can get over the counter at a lesser uh, uh, dilution, uh, it's very cytotoxic, chlorhexidine. It stains your teeth. We used to use it and still do after gum surgery. Uh, it's kind of like a liquid toothbrush. It disinfects the wound area where the sutures are so that there's no inflammation and that healing goes well. It's debatable whether the, uh, the cons and the pros uh, don't cancel each other out. Um, I, I stopped using that a long time ago and I've had plenty of success. I used to do guided tissue regeneration, 
uh, uh, grafting, using uh, porous membranes, all of that. And we did it all without uh, chlorhexidine. Um, so uh, so we're, we're, what, do you, what do we do? I mean, when I say don't use mouthwash, a lot of people are thinking, well, okay, well, then what mouthwash should I use? And again, just get that category out of your head. You don't need it. Uh, a lot of us are habitually addicted to that feeling, that burn, that cleansing feel, the minty fresh breath, which lasts all of 10 minutes. Here's the irony. The bacteria that are taken down uh, in population, uh, again, these are bactericidal, bacteria killing uh, compounds that are in mouthwash. The, the bacteria come back within 10, 20 minutes, uh, maybe an hour or two, it depends on the bacteria, whether it's anaerobic uh, or aerobic uh, and, and other things as well. There are also some viruses that can get taken down. Uh, typically they're not as susceptible to mouthwashes, um, which is a whole COVID conversation and that pre, that uh, rinse, that pre-rinse that a lot of us are used to now since COVID, all of these bactericidals take down the oral microbiome, this, this organism that lives inside of us, like the gut microbiome. You've heard me talk about the oral microbiome a lot. Um, part of it, one of the microniches is on the back of the tongue, underneath this furry layer on the tongue. Think of a meadow with mushroom, and underneath the mushroom caps are bacteria, and these bacteria actually convert nitrate, which is in a beet or a... a most vegetables, but higher in beets, arugula uh, is a great example. Uh, and it breaks it down to nitrite. And that's the building block for this wonderful gas, uh, nitric oxide, which we're going to talk a little bit about as well. Uh, and that gas, literally, if it's absent, um, could allow your blood pressure to go up. If it is present, it can drop your blood pressure because this gas, uh, okay, what is NO? NO is a uh, it's a signaling molecule. It's a gas. It has a very short uh, uh, existence. It lasts for, I think it's two milliseconds, less than a second, and it's gone. So you have to keep reproducing it. It's also an endogenous prebiotic. It helps the oral microbiome, the bugs in the mouth, do their job uh, and sustains them, uh, gives them uh, substance to do their job. It nourishes them. Uh, it, again, it's a signaling molecule. It is all over the body. Uh, parts of the body are actually uh, producing it. Before age 40, we are endothelial cells. The cells that line our arterial vessels uh, produce it. After 40, we produce less of that. It's the big, it's a, a sign or symptom of aging. Unfortunately, uh, some researchers use the amount of nitric oxide that your body can produce as a sign or a, a gauge of, of where you are in terms of biological age. Um, so, but the good news is that the oral microbiome is still making nitric oxide on the back of your tongue, given you're not using mouthwash, given that you're tongue scraping and that you you do not have a dysbiosis of the oral microbiome. Um, and again, considering that it has such a short life, two milliseconds, two or three, two and a half milliseconds, uh, we need to keep making this stuff. NO, nitric oxide, not nitrous oxide. Don't that that's a different gas that dentists use to make your appointment more palatable. Um, it is responsible for uh, um, uh, increasing blood flow to all the organs and tissues. Um, it also reduces inflammation. It also reduces oxidative stress and destruction of tissue, like in gum disease. Um, and also it helps boost the immune, uh, the immune system, uh, keeps it, keeps it going, helps it. So again, without nitric oxide production, let's, let's assume you're using mouthwash, which twice a day, which two thirds of us are in this country. And then two thirds of us also have some, some degree of, uh, blood pressure issues, high blood pressure, no, no coincidence there. Um, then you're going to have decreased blood flow to all your organs and to tissues and, and tissues with a very small, actually not small, but a very small diameter blood supply, like your kidneys, uh, coronary arteries. A uh, great example are the gums. The gums have a very small, uh, microvasculature. Uh, and as soon as the blood pressure goes up, and you're lacking NO and you don't dilate those blood vessels so that the blood flow can get to those peripheral 
tissues or peripheral blood vessels that perfuse, I think that's the word, or at least give blood to uh, these extremities, tissues, organs, uh, then those organs will slowly die. They can't, the immune, the immune system is not active. The body's defenses are not active and the body's way of uh, feeding this tissue is, is, is just down. It's not present if you're not getting blood to the area. Also, let's say you have a bad sepsis infection um, uh, and you need to get antibiotic to that area. You need a good blood flow to that area. Um, so again, decreased blood flow to organs and tissues without NO, inflammation, that will be on the rise. Oxidative stress and destruction, uh, immune dysfunction. Again, these are kind of markers of chronic disease, but if you, if I were to read through that list again, and if you're a dentist, for example, maybe even if you're just uh, someone who has had experience with gum disease, you would recognize the hallmarks of gum disease. So again, NO has a big, a big plays a big role in in oral health, uh, not just systemic health. Um, so uh, there's a lot of talk. Uh, uh, by the way, there's a um, there's a researcher that to me is the expert in this. I'd love to get him on the show. I'm going to reach out to him. He's a PhD, Nathan Bryan. I think he's out of Texas and. He has products that I'm going to recommend. Uh, I'll put in the show notes, uh, beet lozenges. I would start there if you want to up your if you want to up your potential for the oral microbiome manufacturing more of this uh, nitric oxide. Um, but anyway, uh, he talks a lot about uh, NO in so many great ways. Uh, he does say that erectile dysfunction is the canary in the coal mine for, uh, for low NO. And, and I agree with that. And this is happening more and more, especially in young men, but also it's also disease of the clitoris and female erections. Uh, and um, it really is happening at, at, at ages now, from what I'm reading at in early forties, late thirties. And this is indicative of our addiction to uh, products, especially oral care products that knock down this ability to, to make NO. It's also an indication of that transition or that loss of being able to make it through our, 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 our cardiovascular system. And then that transference of the ability or the continuing of the ability of the oral microbiome to supply us with NO. But again, if we're not using the right products and taking care of our mouth, that, that, that continuation of NO, it drops off precipitously. So, um, Anyway, uh, but anyway, he talks about ED as being the coal, the canary in the coal mine. I agree with that, but I would say there is another canary in the coal mine. We can have two canaries in a coal mine. You know, if they both keel over, then we know something's up. If one kills over, that's still a canary in the coal mine. Uh, indicator, uh, warning sign, and that is gum disease, inflammation to the gums. Again, that microvasculature poor vasodilation, not getting enough blood to that area. There's an immune response. You've got an infection. Uh, you've knocked down your oral microbiome. You have an oral microbiome dysbiosis. You're getting a lot of cavities and the gums are inflamed. And over time, being an acute, sorry, being a chronic disease, it can also be acute, but being a chronic disease, long-term disease that we see in teenagers. Uh, we see it a lot in young adults after age 20. Uh, you, you, it leads to gum recession, deeper pockets, breakdown of the epithelial attachment, these little fibers that grab hold of, it's a girdle of collagen and tissue that seals off this um, inanimate object that breaks through the jawbone. And that needs, that area needs protecting, but it breaks down. And you also have permeability of the oral mucosa due to the emulsifiers and detergents in your mouthwash toothpaste, uh, could come from other sources as well. But anyway, um, this, this is, uh, I think, the canary in the coal mine. And again, this is another example of dentistry being able to see disease early on in, in the course of its trajectory, uh, sleep apnea being the other one. So again, we see this early on and the same thing is happening to the tissue in, in the penis. I mean, that, again, that very small microvasculature that that's how you get an erection blood flow goes to the area but if those if, the, if those channels are not open or if you're not able to dilate those blood vessels well enough there there isn't an erection or the erection isn't the way it should be and again i'm talking about 20 and 30 year olds so uh sad but but uh but uh, reality unfortunately along with low sperm count but 
we won't go there. Um, anyway, so, okay. So NO keeps the blood vessels supple. It allows you to uh, perfuse all these tissues well with blood. It uh, helps with the sexual uh, performance uh, or, or erections. Yeah, it helps with your sex life. Um, and a lot of this has to do with uh, this pathway of converting nitrate to nit sorry nitrate to nitrite and then to NO. And there's a synthase enzyme. It's called the NO nitric oxide synthase. It's an enzyme that is on the back of the tongue. It is also the reason I brought it up. It's also present in the nasal mucosa and the epithelial cells. Uh, so this is why, and well, this is why nose breathing is so important. And this is another reason why I recommend mouth taping. Why not activate those cells, get them online, get the nasal mucosa moist, get those little cilia that these little hairs that beat, that wave back and forth at 16 times per minute and get this conveyor belt of bugs and biomes working so that we can produce NO. So nose breathing produces NO as well. Um, just, just think about that a little bit. Uh, when could we sit down and nose breathe for six, seven, eight hours straight while we're sleeping? Anyway, uh, that's, an, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, okay. Let's talk about a tongue scraping study. Um, I think Nathan, the researcher I mentioned uh, with the PhD, I think he is an author, uh, one of the authors of this study. And this came out recently. And this really got me very, very excited because it kind of reinforces the whole high blood pressure thing based on knocking down the oral microbiome. So if you take away mouthwash and then scrape your tongue, which we recommend here uh, at Acid Dentist for a variety of reasons, but it's mostly about uh, helping the oral microbiome, keeping it healthy, uh, preventing a dysbiosis, which could spread to other micro niches in the mouth that cause cavities and gum disease. Uh, scraping your tongue has many benefits. Uh, again, that, that meadow of mushrooms with bacteria underneath it, if you're eating a lot of processed foods, uh, mulchy goldfish, saltine crackers kind of foods, um, it can, it can be anything processed, anything in the bag, anything that's been made better by man or enriched is a word you should stay away from or look for, uh, the bacteria start the, that NO synthase pathway doesn't work very well. The nitrate to nit, sorry, nitrate to nitrite, uh, pathway is blunted a little bit stunted. And then the, those, the oral microbiome underneath that, that tongue layer, and sometimes you can see that layer. If you can't, if your tongue doesn't look pink and fleshy and it's got a coating on it, that's that's kind of what you need to scrape off. Um, then these bugs that are not doing well, they're not commensal, they're not symbiotic anymore. The oral microbiome is dysbiotic. Uh, the good bugs are not doing well. They're not able to modulate the bad bugs as well. The bad bugs come up in population. The populations change. That causes bad breath. And even if you, you are using mouthwash, especially if you're using mouthwash, if you take down the oral microbiome, your breath may smell minty as, as long as, I mean, for within five, 10 minutes of using the mouthwash, it could be a mint, for example, but then it goes back to its normal state. Um, but anyway, uh, killing those bacteria is bad, but scraping the back of the tongue allows the oral microbiome to do its job. Again, you're not removing a biofilm, you're helping it start over again by just disrupting it and cleaning it. And then those bugs start producing NO and NO actually production will suppress bad breath. It will, you won't be producing the ammonia. Uh, I think it's an ammonia dioxide. Don't quote me on that. It's uh, ammonia products. From there come the sulfur, sulfide bonds. And so if you are not scraping your tongue or if you're using mouthwash or both, then the oral microbiome, because it's dysbiotic, is going to be very busy making those very strong smelling compounds and hence you will have bad breath. So anyway, um, what else can I say about this? Uh, if you have high blood pressure, you know, obviously see your physician, don't go off of your meds, but start scraping your tongue daily. In the beginning, you're going to see a very viscous, um, beige liquid. Sometimes your tongue will bleed in the beginning and keep scraping, not necessarily 
the first time because your tongue actually will hurt a little bit. It could, it depends on how much inflammation there is on the dorsal side of the tongue, but, um, and scrape as far back as you can. Yes. A lot of you, a lot of us have a gag reflex. You can, that in time will go away. You can train yourself properly. Uh, I would look at yourself scraping the tongue that really helps with the gag reflex doing it without looking will set off that gag reflex even more. Um, but, and if you have a tongue tie, you're more likely to get a gag reflex. If you're a mouth breather, perhaps that, that also. So there are a lot of ways to fix that. Um, but anyway, uh, scrape the tongue, get rid of the mouthwash. You'll see that beige liquid coming off. And within two to 12 days, you'll scrape once or twice and there will be no liquid or it'll be very clear. It'll look like a mucus, a, a clear mucus. And that is normal. You want mucus. You want mucus in your mouth. You want mucus in the lining of your throat. You want mucus in your mouth. You want saliva in your mouth. You're scraping off some saliva that has a slight different consistency than saliva that's free in the mouth. Again, saliva has different viscosities, slightly different pHs throughout the mouth, but that beige layer will go away and your breath will smell better. Your blood pressure will drop and you'll produce more, especially if you're over age 40, you'll be still, you'll go, you'll, be going back to being able to produce NO. Um, if you're just producing NO from your blood vessels as a young person, then maybe you'll up your NO production. You'll feel better. There are many benefits to NO, um, and certainly in terms of mood and, and strength and also exercise. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people that are trying to improve their VO2 max, uh, which is a gauge of how efficient you are uh, of of using oxygen and oxygenating muscles and, and ex the ability to exercise efficiently. And, but they're using mouthwash. They may not be scraping their tongue and you literally are reversing the benefits of exercise. <clears throat> if you are not, if you have those conditions, in other words, if you're the back of your tongue is dysbiotic, unbelievable, right? Again, these are all based on studies. I'm going to include about four or five studies. I'm going to include the link to the lozenges, beets and arugula. Those are my two favorites for beefing and the beet lozenges for beefing up uh, NO production. Uh, of course, you can take all these things and eat them and eat well, but if you're using mouthwash or if you're not scraping your tongue and you have a dysbiotic furry layer, brown layer back there, it won't matter because you need those bugs to be in fighting shape in, in, in a, in a, in a nice place where they can actually produce, uh, the NO. So, so the, you can't just eat well and you can't exercise a lot. You, you need to do, you know, do the whole thing. Um, make sure that your oral microbiome is, is optimal is operating the way it should. So, all right. Um, the good news is that you can turn this around in four to six days just by scraping your tongue. You can really make some big differences. Uh, I have seen with my patients uh, under the under the uh, direction of a physician where they've gone off of high blood pressure medication. That's not always the case. It depends on what the etiology or the root source of uh, root cause of high blood pressure is. But you can certainly, even though you do have a blood pressure, maybe you could bring down the amount of medication that you need. But again, this is all done with uh, the guidance from your physician. Uh, but tell your physician that you're doing this and ask him, or you know, when you measure your blood pressure, always check to see if there are changes based on behavioral uh, changes that you make, dietary changes you make, uh, and, and oral hygiene uh, habits that, that you're hopefully going to make after listening to me go on and on about nitric oxide. Um, what else? Uh, I've talked about it as being an endogenous prebiotic. That means it's a pre prebiotic that your body makes. Bacteria in the mouth, the oral microbiome loves NO. Not all of them and not all in the same amount, but it really does help the good guys do their job and help keep the bad guys uh, at, in, in their place. Uh, again, you don't want to get rid of the bad guys. You cannot disinfect your way out of oral disease, like with mouthwash or with a strong toothpaste. Um, but again, scraping your tongue, brushing, using the right toothpaste, stay away from emulsifiers and surfactants. Not many toothpastes out there that essentially a bentonite clay toothpaste is your only chance of not having a uh, emulsifier and surfactant. They're kind of down on the list, but they do uh, disrupt the oral microbiome. 
a lipid or a soap, an emulsifier will uh, break a fatty lipid layer, which is what most cell walls, I think what all cell, cell walls are made up of. So, so you don't want that. Um, and I haven't really seen a toothpaste that has a good remineralizing agent that also has a bentonite clay in it. There may be some other materials out there, but, but if it has an SLS sodium lauryl sulfate in it or an SLS, uh, what's the word, replacement or um, analog, again, it's like BPA. When BPA was considered to be bad for us, uh, the plastic manufacturers came out with a BPA-free version of that product, and it's just a different BPA, slightly different molecule. And they're doing the same thing with the SLS-free toothpaste. They're sourcing from coconuts. And again, if you if you take coconut oil, which is what we use in coconut uh, oil pulling, um, and you, and this is how most pharmaceuticals are made, they're concentrated from something from nature, typically. A lot of the time they're synthesized and they're synthetic and they're unique compounds or molecules. Um, but uh, you can make coconut oil strip your mouth. Uh, you can refine it and distill it and, and, and make it very strong. So just because it has a natural source doesn't mean it's good for you. Um, okay, so eat well, scrape your tongue, eat the right foods that help you produce NO. Don't worry about at age 40, not being able to make it uh, uh, via your endothelial cells. You can make enough by nose breathing and mouth taping will help with that. And also by tongue scraping. And again, throw away the mouthwash never look back. You do not need it. You're not missing out on anything. Um, it's just not helpful. It's a liquid. It doesn't stick. It's not strong enough to remove a biofilm. That leads me to the last topic. So what is strong enough to remove biofilm other than brushing or flossing? These are the mechanical methods of, of disrupting and breaking apart the biofilm. Again, we don't remove the biofilm. That's impossible. Uh, you'd have to strip it with a solvent. And of course, that's would be you, your your gums would be raw and bleeding within minutes. Uh, and it, it would take a long time to heal. That has happened to some people with uh, homeopathic, natural, integrative mouthwashes because of the essential oils, the concentration of essential oils. They literally burned. This happened to a friend of mine, influencer out on the East Coast. He called me up. I thought I was using the right product. What happened? I can't talk. He couldn't He couldn't get back on Instagram for, I think it was two and a half weeks. And we narrowed it down to the concentration of cinnamon oil and essential oil, which is very anti, uh, back, not anti, it's bactericidal. It's one of the strong ones. Anise being the least bactericidal. Uh, and this was put into a toothpaste. And, you know, it's it's ridiculous. Again, there's there's no regulation, uh, FDA regulation, other than how much fluoride is in toothpaste. Uh, it's it's a cosmetic product. Toothpaste, mouthwash, these are all cosmetic products. And that allows these corporations to run wild with their claims and putting in chemicals like triclosan. Uh, that was banned from California. Thank goodness. Good for California. They got rid of microbeads and all these things that toothpaste companies were adding to toothpaste. And again, they're, the reason to add it had no scientific basis. And in fact, just like mouthwashes, it's actually making things worse. It's actually upping your incidence of decay, tooth decay, gum disease. It's costing you a lot of money, a lot of bad breath, a lot of pain, um, a lot of time in the dental chair. That shouldn't be the case. So, but anyway, there are new products coming out. Uh, go to our website, askthedentist.com. Uh, all those products are tested and approved by me over many, many months or years of testing uh, and also with patients that I've worked with. A few of the toothpaste have emulsifiers and surfactants. You always let me know about that. Thank you very much. But the people need that remineralizing agent. Um, and so I'm okay with that, that down at the bottom worry of emulsifiers and surfactants. Good news, there is a toothpaste coming out by the end of this year that I think is perfect. Um, well, perfect is a strong word. There's nothing perfect. Perfect would be we don't need toothpaste because we're eating the perfect diet um, and not a Western diet, a manufactured diet. Um, and we're not mouth breathing. And you know, just like our ancestors, they rarely got cavities. Um, anyway, but it is a toothpaste that I can stand behind 100% because it has the right amount, the therapeutic effect of a non-fluoride remin remineralizing agent. In other words, help reverse decay, prevent it, 
Uh, it helps the ionic integrity of saliva. Um, saliva is basically a super saturated solution of minerals, mostly calcium, uh, calcium, uh, minerals, uh, uh, hydroxyapatite. Uh, which is what's in our teeth. No surprise there. That's where it all comes from. And that's how our teeth are able to remineralize and stay healthy and, and not dissolve in the mouth. And then, um, uh, I mean, that's saliva. And so, uh, and then the surfactants come along and the emulsifiers, and they actually literally strip the oral mucosa and other parts, uh, the floor of the mouth, for example, which is where a lot of homeopathic medication is taken up into the blood supply. The, the, these are semi-permeable borders, just like the gut, but the emulsifiers and surfactants actually make them more permeable. It's kind of like uh, detergent, uh, sorry, the rinse aid in, in dishwashers. Uh, I just turned off my rinse aid. It's now set at zero. You can do that with most uh, dishwashers. I couldn't get it out of my dishwasher because I had kept refilling the container. Um, but I, under settings, I, I told the dishwasher not to add any because that does get into your gut again, an emulsifier surfactant, mostly a surfactant so that your dishes are, and glassware is spot free. I mean, ridiculous, right? For that convenience. And it is causing a disruption probably of your oral microbiome, no studies on that, but, and I'll include this study and there are several, but I just came across this. I had heard about this. I researched it and boy, up front within seconds, lots of great studies indicating that we should not be using that surfactant in our dishwasher. Uh, it does leave a film on the glass when you pour water in there, which is a universal solvent, you are disrupting your gut microbiome. Very likely the same for the oral microbiome. So easy, easy hack there. So anyway, uh, so I turned that off. Uh, where was I going? I got sidetracked there again, another rabbit hole. Um, anyway, uh, the, I, I hope you understand now this link between high blood pressure and mouthwash. It's all about the oral microbiome. Again, no surprise. It's always about the oral microbiome when it comes to oral health. But in this case, it's also about systemic health. Two thirds of us in this country have high blood pressure. Two thirds of us are using mouthwash twice a day, throw it away, don't look back and then see what happens and start scraping your tongue and turn off, tell your dishwasher to stop squirting out all that surfactant. You don't need it. And you know what? My dishes are looking fine. And I clean all my crystal by hand just because I'm very picky. And I worry about the taste of detergent and, and the surfactant that could affect the wine that I'm drinking, that my friends are drinking when we're drinking wine. So silly, I know. We love our little conveniences. We love our tech. All this high-tech stuff we think is so cool and it makes our life easier. What has it actually done to our lives? Mouthwash is a perfect example of, of that very scary thought. Uh, it has made our lives much worse. Thanks for listening. Um, if you don't have a dentist that's discussing these matters with you and asking you what kind of mouthwash you're, you're using and then telling you to throw it away, for example, and there are many other things, they're not addressing the oral microbiome when it comes to any aspect of your treatment, when it comes to oral health, even cavities, even the heart tissues, the fill and drill aspect of it, uh, you're seeing the wrong dentist. Uh, not addressing the oral microbiome, not testing for the oral microbiome. I'm a big fan of testing. There's one test that I, I think is the best. It's the bristle test. It's again on in our uh, website store. Um, your dentist should be testing. They should be looking at what are the actual bacterial counts in your mouth. And again, by doing that, even though you're in perfect health, you're not getting cavities, you have no bleeding upon provocation. When you floss, you don't bleed. When you brush, you don't bleed. Your back of your tongue looks great. You're producing nitric oxide. You don't have halitosis. That's a sign of dysbiosis of the oral microbiome. That's a symptom of di oral disease. Uh, all of those things, then you could still have some issues. Uh, by testing, you're gonna find out early on what you're prone to getting whether it's gum disease or halitosis, and then you can do things to, to, to help with that. You can start eating the right foods for NO production. Um, the bristle has a halitosis score, which would relate to everything we just talked about with scraping your tongue uh, to lower blood pressure, to help the, these bacteria that help produce NO, um, and, and also to, 
to kind of help revitalize uh, the oral microbiome so that it can do its job. Um, anyway, uh, testing is important. Just throw away the mouthwash, up those NO levels, talk to your dentist about this, assuming that they're a, functionally provided, a functional provider or functionally minded. And then if you don't have one, go to our directory. Not all areas are being served by a functional dentist yet. Uh, I'll put those links in the show notes. It is askthedentist.com slash directory. And again, thank you so much for joining me uh, uh, on these small bites. Again, it wasn't as small as I thought it would be. I say that after every small bite. But again, thanks for joining me. Uh, the Max Lugavere episode, again, very excited to be with him, talking with him, hanging out with him for a while. That is breaking probably around the same time that you're seeing this. So look for it. Um, it's the Genius Life podcast. And we talked kind of all things for about an hour and 10 minutes, all things um, oral health, uh, oral microbiome, and he's going to test and uh, and get back to us on what he found. Uh, I mean, again, you can be very healthy and I've done this several times. There are things that pop up that of, of interest. So anyway, thank you for your interest in oral health. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next episode, which I'm actually going to do right after this one. I'm a little bit behind. I apologize for that. Thanks. Great to see you again. Thanks for listening. See you soon.